Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. All right, well, we got a lot of news to get into today, so let's get going. The death at age 88 of Phil Donahue. Yeah, Phil Donahue was, um, I mean, he was the guy. He was the, the pioneer of afternoon talk shows in the late 60s and the 70s in the United States. And um, Oprah Winfrey was kind of like his successor in a lot of ways. Um <laughs> But I guess from from a pro wrestling standpoint, he did a couple of shows with pro wrestling that were pretty memorable at the time that that pro wrestling didn't get a lot of coverage like that. Like now it wouldn't be as big of a deal because wrestlers are on these type of shows. But he did. Excuse me. He did one in, um, you know, I would say um, late, I mean, probably early 80s. Um, with uh, the AWA crew, you know, uh, Adrian Adonis, Hulk Hogan, um, that crew, Vern Gagne. Um, and then he did the more famous one um, and the more widely watched one, which was the 1992 one that I was on with Vince McMahon and Bruno San Martino and superstar Billy Graham, which was um, an amazing story, an amazing experience. If you want to know um, basically what happened, um, the February... 15th 2019 issue or a edition of uh wrestling observer radio that garrett and i did we did a show going through my memories of that and there's also um the uh march um i believe it's march 23rd 1992 issue which would be um covering it on that day it's kind of interesting because um i haven't read the story um that i wrote in that issue in probably 20 years and so there were some things obviously this is 32 years ago so uh there were some things that i had forgotten as far as certain details of of the day and that week before like i had actually forgotten that i turned them down doing that show i didn't forget that i was scared to death going on that show because i had never done i had probably done some taped um, well, I had done some taped TV stuff and things like that. That was no big deal. But this was like live at a time when, you know, that was like the number one show on daytime television all across the country. I think 15 million people or some crazy number like that. I don't Maybe it wasn't that much. I think it was maybe five or six million, actually, um, were watching. And I was kind of like all these guys that are on this show, like Vince and, and Sam Martino and Billy Graham and uh, Randy Orton, uh, Barry Orton. Um, Barry Orton, not Randy Orton, but um, it's Randy's um, uncle. Um, but these were all guys that were experienced TV guys who were known for being able to talk. I mean, a lot of people don't know about Barry Orton, but Barry Orton was was a hell of a promo as um, Zodiac in uh, Stampede Wrestling. So the guy could talk, and Vince, you know, obviously. Bruno was a legendary talker. Billy Graham was even more legendary talker. Um so, um, and actually the best talker on the show was Murray Hodgson, who was uh, an announcer who was fired by WWE, who was uh, a con man, as if you um, go through, you know, you'll know that. Who, uh, But his, 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 his thing on the show was uh, quite compelling. It was a crazy-ass day. Um, and like I said, like, if you want the details, you know, that show that I did with Garrett's probably the best thing. So the only, the st so I don't really go into the show, but it was... It was a fascinating show. Um, you know, Vince McMahon, um, we had been told was not going to be on the show. And then like an hour before the show, it's like Vince is coming. And Vince tried to um, put a plan in place that would have been, um, you know, how would I describe it? Perry Mason's before everyone's time. Um, but that was Perry Mason was this, this, this show where um, he was like a lawyer. And in, his, and in the show... It was like the case was going on, and in every episode, it was like every show was had the same plot, I think, um, that at the last minute, some secret witness or some secret thing popped into his head, and he won the case at the last second, right? So Vince had come up with this Perry Mason scenario where he was going to, you know, uh, one of the topics was um, it's so funny. It's funny because how, how different all this stuff would have been had it played out now instead of then. I mean, like now it would have gotten ridiculous news media. Then it got very little because it was pro wrestling. But um, there was a scandal with um, 
that involved Mel Phillips, who was uh, the head of the ring crew and, and um, underage boys. And um, one of them was Tom Cole, who recently passed away from suicide a couple of years back. Uh, we had him on the show a couple times and stuff. Um, but um, he had he had complained and, and um, he had done some interviews. Um, he was very close to Phil Mushnick of the New York Post and, um, you know, had told his story. Um, and it, it was one of the th reasons that Donahue did the show. It was not the main reason, um, because I even had told them, like, if this is the show, I don't want to be part of it. Um, but they said that they would discuss, like, the steroid use and things like that. So we did discuss. That was discussed. But anyway, um, Vince, so, so he had, uh, Tom Cole had filed a lawsuit against WWE and um, had complained that he had, basically he had gotten fired um, as a member of the ring crew in his mind because he turned down sexual advances from Terry Garvin, who was um, one of the vice presidents of the company at the time, who resigned immediately um, when all this came, when these stories started breaking. And um, so it, it, you know, it was a big deal um, in some places. And um, he actually befriended uh, Orton, um, and a little bit some of the other guys on the thing. Like, I mean, I had talked to him. I talked to him a lot more after then. But, um, you know, but it it was... Um, so so during the weekend before the show, the show was on a Monday, and it was booked on, uh, I'm going to say Thursday, Friday. So, uh, you know, like, I, I think I was asked on a Thursday to come on and um, agreed to come on. And then um, the Monday comes, and all of a sudden... Vince is going to be on the show. And everybody's kind of like, really? Vince is going to be on the show? And um, I think some of the people were real happy because they wanted to debate Vince. And I was just like, whatever. And uh, um, so he had set up, he had settled with Cole over the weekend, tried to keep it secret from everyone, including Orton, and who was close to him. And before the show starts, Orton went to me and and others on the show and just goes um i you know i've been you know the last couple of days i've been trying to get a hold of tom cole and he's not returning my call and he just goes i think something's up and it just goes um don't mention his name on the show because like nobody will mention his name unless we do so don't mention his name don't mention his story just don't say anything about him talk about something else so none of us talked about him and we later found out that um, he had settled with Vince. Actually, the show was the show had just ended. The show had just ended. Um, Vince and his crew had just left um, the building, and the producer comes up to me and he's all shocked. He just goes, "You're never going to believe. You're never going to believe what just happened." I go, "What?" And he goes, "Tom Cole was in the audience," and I go, "Really?" And 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 he he was he said that like. The people on the stage, like Billy Graham, were liars, and he was totally defending Vince McMahon. And I was like, oh, so he settled. And in fact, that's how we found out that he settled. But he was there when his name came up to basically go, oh, yeah, Vince is great, and all this stuff is bullshit, and, you know, have the Perry Mason moment, you know, on that show. And it, it didn't happen. But, um, yeah, it was uh, a crazy, you know, there's, there's clips of the show. Um, on YouTube, you could easily access it. It is a very interesting part of history, an interesting, you know, very memorable day in my life for sure. Um, so uh, as far as Phil Donahue goes, I mean, he, he was he was great at what he did. I mean, I knew that long before the show, but that day, it's the only time I met him was that day. And, um, but he talked with me a decent amount. I mean, it wasn't like he was just some big TV star and like, you know, all of his producers did all the work and they kind of fed him stuff and he faked his way through it. This guy, he was, um, you know, he studied the thing, which is a lot more than I could say for most of the hosts that did those shows that just kind of faked their way through it. And it's ha ha, it's wrestling and everything. And even during the thing, you know, he had mentioned, you know, people going like, uh, ha ha, it's wrestling, you know, because wrestling's not real. So therefore, the sexual scandal isn't real. Therefore, you know, deaths in wrestling aren't real that type of stuff he you know he completely dismissed that right away which didn't even though the audience still was like you know couldn't you know they they 
the, the studio audience just thought wrestling was a joke. So um, we got some really weird ass questions and everything like that. But it was, um, but you know, as far as like, if you watch the show, you could see how good he is. Um, but backstage, I mean, the guy was, I, I was very, very impressed with what a pro he was. And um, you know, the, the thing that killed his show was, you know, he was like a real reporter um, and wanted to do a real straight show. And his popularity led to lots and lots of talk shows. I mean, you know, his show was considered one of the, um, you know, most important television shows in the history of the genre. Um, I think somebody listed as the, uh, said it was like they had a thing where it was the 29th most important television show in the history of American television and whatever, whatever that means. But, um, but it was, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it created the, the idea of the talk shows. And as, um, you know, if something's really successful on TV, everybody copies. That's how it is. You know, if, if some sort of a comedy is, is real popular, everybody tries to copy it. You know, wrestling is popular. Everybody wants wrestling. Wrestling is not popular. Nobody wants wrestling. You know, that type of thing. Um, so in the um, 90s, you know, the, the, the market exploded. And Oprah Winfrey passed him by and became the star. And then there were a lot of others that were very sleazy. And the reality was is that the sleazy shows started to do much better in the ratings and his show started dwindling in the ratings because people would rather watch the sleazy shows you know whether it was jerry springer or sally jesse raphael i mean i had a friend who was on sally jesse raphael and told me that the whole show was a work and obviously jerry springer was a work you know i mean they had a booker jamie dundee was the booker you know at one point for that show and would bring in guests and it was you know it was all it was i don't want to say everything on jerry springer was a work but most certainly was and so, um, you know, that was, uh, but he was not, you know, his show wasn't a work or anything like that. And it wasn't, you know, sleazy. And, uh, you know, as the genre changed, he couldn't compete. And there was also, um, he had some controversial opinions on certain stories, in particular the Gulf War, that, um, I mean, it was bad enough that uh, uh, he got canceled in major markets. And once that happened, the ball was rolling and, and his show uh, went away, you know, I think in the uh, 90s. And there was an attempt by MSNBC to bring him back about five years later. And uh, that didn't last long either because of his views on the war. So, um, but but major, you know, major, major star. Um, husband of Marlo Thomas, who was also a famous actress in her day and... Um, you know, part of the Danny Thomas, you know, like the, the, the um, charity work that Danny Thomas did, who he did a great, great job with charity and everything like that. And um, so, you know, just uh, 88 years old, long life. Um, sorry to uh, hear about him. But like I said, like as far as doing a show with him, you know, that guy was he was awesome. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.